Thanks, Wendy. When young women enter the workforce, they are sometimes blindsided by gender-related obstacles they encounter. Enter Purdue University's Brock Wilson Center for Women in Management, an important resource helping to prepare women to understand, navigate, and bridge the gender divide gap they often face when they land their first jobs. I'm Megan Knoll, Vice President of Marketing at 1150 Academy, and I'm pleased to learn more about Purdue's Brock Wilson Center for Women in Management from Director Mira Habashi. Welcome, Mira. Hi, Megan. Thanks for having me. It's great to, to meet you. Um, so I, I was saying, as a woman in leadership, this is particularly interesting to me. Um, I, can you tell us about some of the common challenges that you face or you see women facing as they enter the workforce? Yeah, I'm, I think that we, as a center, focus a lot on the challenges women face as they enter the workforce and then also as they want to move up in the ranks and get into those leadership positions. And we do different things at each of those stages. Um, one of the early things that women often face is confidence related issues, so things like imposter syndrome. And so we do some programming um, focused on kind of how to boost your confidence and, and how to silence those voices in your head as you're moving into the new workspaces that, that you're going to occupy. Um, we also um, do a lot early on with negotiation. And so how do you get that best compensation package for you and make sure that you're asking for the same thing that, that men in your position might ask for. And then throughout their careers, we also focus a lot on kind of representation and role models. So, so far too often we don't see women in those leadership positions, especially as women move into male-dominated careers. Um, and so we try to do a lot with um, spotlighting and highlighting um, successful women, su successful alumna who've come through Purdue and who are in those leadership positions just to, to show the students that but people that look like them can occupy those spaces and those those jobs. Yeah, that's great. It sounds like you're preparing them really well. How are you uh, preparing the organizations and the employers for women as they enter the workforce and to how to avoid that, that common workforce bias? Yeah, so one of the things that I think is really um, a spotlight or a focus of our center is um, research on work-life balance. And so we have two great researchers in the Cranert School of Management, um, Kelly Wilson and Ellen Kosick, who do a lot of research on work-life balance and what that looks like. And so one of the things that we've tried to do every year is put out some best practices for work-life balance and what that looks like. And that, I think that's become especially important during the pandemic, right, and during COVID. There's so much research now talking about how COVID has disproportionately impacted women in the workplace, and we're losing our jobs more. Um, we're, you know, being affected by the unpaid labor that women are doing at home. And so um, just recently, um, two weeks ago, we, we hosted a power shift case competition in which we actually had some of our alumni um, um, come in and record videos on how COVID has affected their work at home and work at life. And, and we offered some, um, our students offered suggestions on what organizations could do to um, better that problem. That's great. It sounds like you have a lot of interesting programming. Is there anything coming up that um, you want to speak more on? Yeah, so I think our signature program is our Empowering Women in Business High School Summer Program, where we bring in um, students to kind of learn about business, but also do some gender empowerment programming. Um, we offer that free, and we uh, really look towards um, growing that. So that's probably our signature program. We also have a lot more case competitions and a lot more speakers coming up that are, are highlighted on our website. But um, I would say our high school program is something that we're really proud of. Of. That's great. Um, so how else are you average, leveraging the, uh, the community and the organizations in the community and even your alumna um, as you move forward? Yeah, so we pair with our alumna um, all the time. So they come into our classes, they judge our case competitions, and we pair up with companies like Eli Lilly, PepsiCo, John Deere, GM, Accenture to do a lot of our program. They sponsor our program, they come in and they mentor our students, they give them feedback, um, and we even go into their companies and sometimes give workshops on what it's like to manage a diverse group and to be um, a leader for a diverse workforce and so we try to impact the community as much as we can but we also have them try to impact our students as well. That's great. It's, this has been really interesting for me to learn about and to read more about when I was preparing for this interview. So thank you very much, Mira. I was saying that it's, um, I commend Purdue for doing this, and it's also just a little bit sad that we have to even have an organization like this, but yes. great, great work. Thank